Hello, this is Matt Hawk, and I want to talk a little bit today about uh, school dress and appearance. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how um, the courts view it and some of the laws that are in place um, for school dress and how it affects um, my school, Swallows Charter Academy, personally today. Uh, some of the restrictions upheld by the courts um, having regulations in place for the safety of students. Uh, this is this is one that I think is often overlooked by students that they don't realize that school dress codes definitely are in place for their own safety. Uh, for example, long hair jewelry in a laboratory or having proper footwear for PE class. You know, if both these things are violated, it could result in a, a very bad injury um, for the student and could cause lawsuits for the school. Um, so students need to um, know that this is definitely for their for their own safety. Um, another restriction upheld by the court, restriction of clothing that calls attention to your body or clothing that contains vulgarity. Um, this is probably what most students think of when they think of a dress code. Um, and it can be one that can be kind of tough to assess and to, well, maybe not too tough to assess, but to confront the student um, because oftentimes um, the parents don't even see a, a problem with what their students are wearing as well. Um, that's why it's so important that we have a clear and concise um, dress code in place so that when a parent challenges you, um, you can refer back to that dress code and let them know where it is so that they can see for themselves that the student clearly is in violation of the dress code. Um, so that's something that you know, I guess it can be uncomfortable to confront, but it's definitely necessary to um, let the students know that their dress is inappropriate. Uh, another restriction upheld by the courts is regulating clothing or appearance for the purpose of good hygiene. This can be kind of a touchy subject for um, administrators to confront um, because sometimes that good hygiene can be a result of the student's home life. Um, so as an administrator or a counselor, um, when confronting that student, they need to um, be very sensitive in, in telling that student that their hygiene um, needs to improve and get some information about the home life and see if there's something that the school can help with because you know maybe that's something that the student really can't help because of their home situation. Um, so as an administrator, we need to make sure that we know what the student's home life is like so that, that we could help them in some way if we can. Another restriction upheld by the court uh, courts is uh, regulating dress and appearance for the important purpose of staying healthy. And I think this goes hand in hand with um, good hygiene. You know, if a student's not taking care of their body, um, not practicing good hygiene, then germs and diseases even could get on the student's clothing and can spread around the school. And uh, that's the last thing that an administrator would want to happen in their school is um, students getting sick as a result of bad hygiene. Um, so, you know, part of a dress code is to make sure that students are dressing appropriately. Um, and that their clothing is clean so that you know diseases cannot spread within a school um, because you know everybody's in tight quarters in a school so if there's anything that's any germs they spread very very quickly responsibility the courts in some states want administrators to set their reasonable guidelines up before a court has to determine whether it is unconstitutional you know this makes sense to me um, I, in my own words I think the courts are basically saying you know deal with most of your problems. You can deal with them within the walls of your own school um, so that we don't get every little case. Um, because in today's world, you know, lawsuits seem to be more prevalent when, when parents are challenging the school district. And, um, you know, I think the courts want us to have reasonable guidelines set up within our schools so that we can handle most of the issues. Uh, now, I'm sure that there are some that will go to the courts, but I think the courts just want the schools to uh, deal with it there so that they don't have to deal with every single case. And like I said, that, that makes sense to me, why they would want that. Communication. I think this is the big one. When communicating with staff, make sure everyone understands what is and what is not appropriate. Consistency is key in sending a clear message about the school's dress code. Um, I know in my, my own school, um, we need to make sure, being a K-12 school, that we are consistent with all students when, when knowing what's appropriate and what is inappropriate dress. Um, staff needs to know what the regulations are um, because it's a bad situation when a few teachers enforce the school's dress code as they should and some teachers don't. 
Um, if a student is told to change their dress and is called out by an administrator and they see somebody else wearing the same type of clothing and nothing's happening to that student, you know, what kind of message does that send about the school? And it's definitely, it's not fair for a student as well. Um, so all teachers and staff need to um, be aware what is not appropriate and not be afraid to call out a student if needs be about their dress. Sensitivity. Be sensitive and kind when telling a student that their dress is inappropriate. If possible, have men confront men and women confront women regarding their dress. Um, this is a big one. You know, when, when, we're, when we're confronting somebody about the clothing they're wearing, it's a personal issue. Um, but it's something that needs to be brought up. And um, I myself, being a male teacher, um, when I have a female student that's dressed inappropriately, and it has happened, um, I call our counselor and have our counselor deal with it. Not that I can't deal with it, but I just don't want to run the risk of any type of um, issue being brought up from a male telling a female about how she's dressed. Um, and it's happened a few times throughout the school year, and my counselor is very glad that I do that. And she says, please don't hesitate to let me know, and I will t take that student. Um, and, you know, having women confront women, and if a guy's dressed inappropriately, I'm more than happy to, to talk to him as well. I think we just avoid any headaches that we shouldn't have to deal with by doing it that way. Uh, setting an example. This is a big one. Since our school is a K-12 school, it's very important that the older students, the high school, stu uh, high school and middle school students, set the example of proper dress for the younger students. You know, in, in our school we have 18-year-olds and we also have 5-year-olds. And so when they're all in the same type of location, um, you don't want like a ninth grader dressed very inappropriately around a second or third grader. You know, what kind of message does that send to that third grader? And um, what kind of examples does that set to that third grader for when they get older? So it's important that we talk to our older students and let them know that they are setting an example through the clothes they wear um, to the younger students. And it is a responsibility of theirs to set a good example for our school. Uh, in conclusion, we want our school and students to be above and beyond average. They need to dress the part as well. As with anything else in life, how we dress can make a lasting impression to others, whether we like it or not. And um, I think that's so true that whether we like it or not, people, you know, first impressions often can be a result of the clothes we wear. Um, and whether we like it or not, that's the type of impression we're going to make. And so each day at school, we are um, wanting students to um, dress the part. We are above an above average school, and our students need to dress that way as well. And um, I appreciate the time that I've been given to give this presentation. Thank you very much.